Yeah. Even four years ago, I think um, the fact that I was 25 um, and, um, you know, just, just wanting to do something special at, at the international level, mm -hmm. um, I guess there was a lot of uh, desperation. There was a lot of, um, um, I wouldn't say unnecessary, but some things that were probably right for that time um, in the way I, I was in general. Um, so now, you know, four years down the line, having just um, um, been captain of India for a couple of years now, mm -hmm. it's it's all, you know, changed a lot for me in the last uh, year and a half or so, um, where I've had to understand myself better. Um, and I guess that's a, a gradual change, you know. But, I, but the one thing is that I've always been myself. I've never tried to be someone else because of the opinion. Um, and hence, I learned from my own mistakes. I realized my own mistakes myself and um, just kept, you know, correcting them through the, through the journey. But yeah, massively different from the last um, two tours, uh, especially the first one. I was, I was so bad. Uh, I still bad in, bad in what way? <laughs> what, what? I mean, you know, I, I didn't have uh, a good understanding of where to draw the line and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, those are things that I, I wouldn't say I regret, but those definitely I look at them as mistakes. But mistakes that were important for me to commit so that I can learn from them. I, I was never a perfect mold of uh, a typical um, old school cricketer. I was always, I always wanted to just find my own way and I guess those things were a part of that journey. You're very much what I would say, new India. This new young generation coming through, not just in cricket, but across the globe, education-wise, business sense, mm -hmm. you know, developments in technology and taking it to the world and, and taking the world on. Is that right in the mindset that you had that really aggressive, you know, Indian teams traditionally would sit back and be quite timid. <laughs> Nothing timid about you on the field, is there? <laughs> well, I, I would say that I have always been very competitive um, and that that comes from the place that I come from, um, playing in, in Delhi in the, in the junior levels. Things were so competitive that you had to sort of, you know, outperform everyone else and make sure that, that you're doing something special to come up the ranks. So that, that passion and that, uh, you know, obsession about winning came from there. That I just wanted to make a mark so badly because I love the, love the sport so much and I just wanted to make this into my career and so I always kept pushing myself uh, further. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the, the last uh, eight odd years since, you know, you've played the IPL as well and, and you understand how the dynamics have changed, um, guys have started becoming more fearless and uh, they're not, they're not um, you know, taken aback by the big stage. Yeah. Um, big numbers coming in to watch uh, the guys play in their first couple of games, they're making an impact. So I think those are things that are a part of evolution and, and we certainly have, you know, become very different in our personalities in the last decade or so. And I think that's a natural um, sort of an evolution that's happened back home. It's the whole country in general. It's not just, you know, happening in cricket, mm. but it's happening in other fields as well, as you rightly mentioned. And I think that's a very positive thing uh, that people are confident, people are more sure about themselves and they want to achieve excellence, which I think is, is a great thing to have for any country. Can you cast your mind back to an IPL match uh, where we played each other? I was playing with Kings Eleven up in Mahali and, and we were chasing down a big total and David Miller, South African, went on to score a, a match-winning century. Can you remember what happened earlier in that game? <laughs> Yes, I do. You guys were struggling badly and I ended up dropping him and then he got a 38 ball 100. And <laughs> <laughs> Not if you're vicious players, it's fine. It's in the air. And Fielder getting underneath it. Ah, oh, he's put it down. Virat Kohli, would you believe it? He's gone a long way up and the light towers here are on the lower side and probably hit him on the mouth. I hated every ball of that innings and I was just watching in disbelief and I couldn't believe what's happening and he just, you know, went on a roll and there was no looking back. I think you guys won with over and over to spare from there and 
it was just shocking. I mean, I had nightmares of that for a while. Well, that's, that's interesting, and this is why I wanted to bring it up, and it's not to bury your nose in it that we beat you, <laughs> but you dropped a catch, he goes on a, this miraculous win. In the after party at the game where both teams were there, I saw you and I went over and I thought, I've got to go and see you and say, young man, you are a superstar. And I said this to you, you don't worry about that. Don't yeah. put it behind you. Don't worry about what anyone says tomorrow in the press. And you looked at me as if like, what? what, what what's to worry about? <laughs> and it looked like you'd processed it already and dealt with it and got rid of it. And I think for me, champions, Roger Federer, Shane Warne, you know, LeBron James, they, they can process things quickly mm. and get rid of it. Is that, is that fair to say that the um, way you look at things, just deal with it and get on with it? Well, I think at that time it would have happened because there was no other way to deal with it. I mean, I just had to get over it because I knew that I made a mistake and that cost us an important game. Mm. Um, but eventually you, you feel so bad that you reach a point where you say, OK, fine, there's, there's nothing more that you can feel about this, so you've got to get over it. But now what happens is even after, um, you know, we, we lose a game or we lose an important game to someone else, you actually feel really bad about your loss. But at the same time, you look at it as, um, you know, the other teams come to play as well. Yeah. And these guys have emotion and the similar kind of passion that we have. So there's no good reason why we should win every game. And I have naturally started feeling happy for the other team as well if they really outplay us. Because you understand that they are playing the same sport. They might have the same emotions as I do or mm. someone else. So, you know, how good would they be feeling right now? So you, you take it as a part of the game and you, you can't be so obsessive about it that you just can't, you know, put your mind to anything else because you've got to move on, you've got to focus on the next game as well. Yeah. And that thing especially has helped me in test cricket also because um, you, you have to come back for five days and, and you have to have that mindset, otherwise you're going to struggle to forget it and you know, refresh yourself and then focus on what, what's next. Just jumping back to a point you made about uh, that aggressive nature or the desire to succeed coming from your background. Tell us a little bit about that, that growing up in that family environment. And of course, you lost your father at a young age yourself, just uh, 16 or 17. Yep. You were batting in a Ranji Trophy match, is that right, when you heard the news? Yeah, it was my first um, Ranji Trophy season, which is the, the first class level back home. Um, and I think I was in my fourth game and the season wasn't going so well. I'd got 40 odd couple of times, but I was just, you know, understanding what the difference in, in the under-19s and the first-class cricket yeah. level was. And we used to play it in winters back, back home in, in, in Delhi, and it used to do a bit uh, in winters up yeah. north. So I was finding it very difficult, you know, finding new things about my game. And that game was actually a game where I was feeling good. I was batting overnight. I was 40 not out. And um, my father had been suffering from an illness. He got um, a, a, a clot in his brain. He got a stroke um, a few weeks before that day and the left side of his body got paralyzed um, because of that and he was struggling to recover from that because he was a very active man, he used to do things by himself and you know just to have everyone help him for each and everything in the house uh, right from using the toilet to yeah. eating food and you know stuff like that it was very disturbing mentally um, so yeah he, he had a cardiac arrest um, that, that morning when I had to resume batting and um, this happened I think around 2 in the morning and um, so we, we realized everything by 2.30, 2.45 and it was just a shock all over. You know, mm -hmm. everyone was informed, everyone came home, all the relatives and people that we knew. Um, and then I remembered in the morning I had to go and play. Um, so I asked my family, they said I should not be going because, um, you know, this is the situation. Yeah. But I could understand why they are saying no because you know, they are in a state of shock as well. Yeah. So was there any moment where you thought, what would my father have wanted me to do? Yes, that's the thought that pushed me forward. Um, he would have wanted me to play for sure, because he was passionate about the game and he taught me to, you know, go ahead and, and move up the ranks the right way. Yeah. There were a few occasions when I was really young that people wanted favours and to get me into a certain squad and he said no. He said if he can make it on his own ability, good. Otherwise, if he's not good enough, then he should not continue. Um, and that's the attitude that stuck with me always. I never look for excuses. 
and even that day I just went out and played. It was it was tough on me. I mean, I was mm -hmm. blank throughout the innings. How'd you um, get? Did you get any runs? I I got ninety, um, but I was given a howler of a decision caught behind. It was oh, you know you daylight that between one. bat and ball. Oh. <laughs> I felt so bad about it, but then I finished the game. Um, and I went into the change room. I changed up quickly because they had the cremation ceremony. And then I went there to finish the rituals and then came back next day um, to resume the game. Amazing. What about post that life for the family and for you? Because your father played a, a, a strong part in getting you into cricket, didn't he? Getting you a, registering at an academy and, and you know, encouraging you that way. How was life post that? Was he, was he a criminal lawyer? Is that right? Yes, was yeah. he was. Um, he actually, I'd asked him to get me enrolled into a professional setup to learn the sport yeah. because I was good at at looking at all of you guys playing, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, just trying to copy uh, what all the best players in the world did on mm. TV. And I used to do that pretty well with the tennis ball. Yeah. So my friends told me, "Why don't you try and you know do it professionally? You're pretty good." So then I told my father, he got me a form the next day and uh, from there on the journey continued. But yeah, after that time it was tough on the family because we were living on a, on a, on a you know, house on rent. Uh, mm. We didn't have our own place. Um, stuff wasn't good, uh, going good in the house. So it was, it was difficult times for the next uh, four or five years after that. Life outside of the game for you, obviously once you got into the Indian team and then your profile grows and then you know, more recently uh, you're married to a very, very well-known actress, producer. Uh, how is life away from the game in India now? It must be very difficult to get any private time. It's hectic, uh, if I have to be really honest. But we live in Mumbai now, which is a bit more relaxed because people are used to seeing known people there. Yeah. And, you know, so many people live there that you can go out for a nice uh, meal. It's not going to be quiet. It's not going to be as casual as walking on a street here. Mm. But you still can go out a few times, but whenever we get time together, we like to spend time at home um, because we hardly get so much time off. And whatever we do, we like to spend quality time at home. And it's chilled out. It's, it's you know, how normal people spend their time together. Yeah. I think people have this fantastical image of, you know, two famous people having a unbelievable yeah. or a different life together. Mustn't but normal things. Yeah it's, yeah, it's 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 as normal as any other household. I think since the time I met my wife is the time I started changing a lot because yeah. I came from a very typical background um, from North India and I did not have any idea about what happens in any other sphere of the society or anyone else's life and so her life was very different came with her own challenges and you mm -hmm. know um, her own perspective of things and it was amazing to just see myself you know how much different things are to the way I think and I was not a very practical person before that um, but she's changed me a lot and I've learned so much from her and yeah I mean that's that's what it's supposed to be like, I suppose. You help each other grow, and yeah. uh, she's certainly helped me grow a lot. Indeed. Uh, I think across Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you've got combined about 90 million followers. So in the day and age of social media. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Uh, do you believe they're true fans of yours? Or I read a quote somewhere where you thought there's fans that support you, and there's fans that will benefit by having a photo with you because their social media will light up? Well, it, it depends. I mean, I cannot speak about someone's intent when they come for a picture. I try to, you know, do as many pictures as I can mm. with people that come to me. But at times it can get very hectic when there are too many people. So I feel bad for the ones that are left behind also. Yeah. Um, I honestly never sit down and think about the fact that I have 90 million followers. <laughs> because that's about four times the amount of people in Australia, <laughs> if you realize. Well, it's, yeah, it's, if you think about those things, then you can get carried away pretty quickly. Yes. Um, my focus is on doing the normal things, just, just staying in the present, just, um, you know, focusing on what I need to do in my sport, in my life, um, and not get too attached to anything else because yeah. it can get dangerous because I understand that this is going to end one day. And I don't want to be addicted to something that, you know, I will not have one day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's great that so many people like or love what I do.
Yeah. And if I can provide entertainment and happiness to them, then I'm grateful for that. I don't, the numbers don't matter. If I'm, if I'm able to impact one life, that's more than enough for me. He's a good player and he loves the battle against Australia. Do you feel any sense of responsibility given the position you hold within India? Like you are probably the most popular person in India. Does that come with responsibility? Of course it does. Um, but at the same time, you cannot change who you are. I've always been myself, as I said. So the people who like me or connect with me, connect with me because of who I am. Sure. Not because, you know, I do things that are likable. I do things which feel good from the heart and which feel right from here. And then people that like it, like it. People who don't, yeah. you know, it's, it's their personal choice. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. The hysteria around the game in India, people, is it, is it dissipating at all? Is it, are they still just absolutely fanatical about the game? No, they're still very, very excited, very, very passionate about the game. Um, as far as test cricket is concerned, I think um, because all the players are pushing it in the right direction and yeah. the communication is right, um, people are still coming and watching. Um, and I think that's the responsibility of every cricketer nowadays who's playing test cricket to promote it as the most important format because it is. To be honest, and there's, there's nothing that can compare to test cricket. Uh, the job satisfaction, the challenges, and you know, it's just life happening over five days as, yeah. as you've experienced so many times yourself. So it, it tests you to the limit um, and something that I love and, and the fans back home respond to how the, the team plays. So the way we play test cricket is with a lot of passion and mm -hmm. we, go to, do, we go to win at any cost, even if the pitch is flat or it's dead or whatever. Uh, we just keep going for victories and people yeah. want to see that. People yeah. want to see wickets and runs and, you know, sessions, exciting cricket. So it all depends on the team and then the people reciprocate that way. So, yeah, the, the culture is still the same back home. I reckon, just last question, about halfway through your career, You've pretty much nailed every milestone, every world record. If you haven't got there, you're encroaching on it. When you finish, how would you like to be remembered? What, what impact on cricket? Um, I, honestly, numbers and all these things are the last thing I would think of when I finish playing. For me, the most important thing is if, I, if I've been able to inspire the next lot um, to push themselves towards excellence and break their own barriers of, of any kind of limitations that they have in, the, in their minds or their bodies, anything like that, because that's what I believe in. Um, you know, to be able to play uh, my cricket at the, at the level that I want till the time I play is my goal. Yeah. And if I can leave that legacy behind where people are striving for excellence every day in what they eat, how they train, how much they sleep, what their rest patterns are like, how, how they practice, how they think about the game, and keep Indian cricket at that level. If I can contribute to that even 5%, I'll be very happy at the end of my career. There's always such a huge cheer and applause when he comes into bat. I wonder what the batsman going back is thinking. They're applauding me getting out. <laughs> Shot. Just a pure shot. Punch of the back foot. Well, this is why he's the world's number one. He's batting down the crease. It was just short, but... The top hand controlling the bat face and the head position. The purest delight, this sort of shot. Oh, beautiful. Could watch it all day. Oh, will beat the fielder. We're seeing shots of great purity here. We saw one from Rohit Sharma earlier, a back foot punch from Virat Kohli. Now this on drive, this is not, this is not just white ball cricket hit where you want. Such classical batting that we're seeing from both players. Rohit Sharma with the flick to the leg side. And Virat Kohli as pure as they come. Full face of the bat. And it's just lovely balance. Wouldn't be surprised if Virat Kohli just puts a bit of pressure back on the bowler here. A bit of extra pace on the ball. I think he'll enjoy that. None more so than that when you see a full face straight back at you. 
How wide is that bat look? How annoyed oh. is he that yeah. he hit the stumps? Virat Kohli once again. Nice deflection, just uh, going to bring another couple in the 50 for Virat Kohli. 49th 50 for Virat Kohli, just another number ticks by. <laughs> He won't even be thinking about it. There's been no acknowledgement, nothing. He wants to win this game. He's not even scored as much as his career average. <laughs> yeah, while he's there, India will give themselves a big chance. Look at the two twos that he's hit and the two twos that Raidu hit in the previous over. Raidu cut down two trees for two twos. <laughs> and Virat Kohli has just sort of carved a little carve on the on the bark. Just taking a little bark off for two twos. Raidu needs to go into Virat Kohli's oh, bag and hit one of his bats. <laughs> Not a boundary since the 14th over though, Virat Kohli. Well done, just been working around well done, like that. Just knocking it into the gaps, low risk. He very rarely hits the ball in the air. Until later on in the innings. Just hits it hard along the ground, times the ball, places the ball. I think the plan is that Kohli's going to be batting in the 50th Excellent. over. Yes. Four. It's taken a while coming, but it's uh, an authoritative shot that brings about that boundary. Only his third. He's placed it superbly, hasn't he? And that's his first in 20 overs. He crashed away too short by Berndorf, the cutter. Pure timing through that offside. He did go early on the dive, though. We well, look how pumped Coley is. Harsha, you talked about shots that you remember. Mm. Virat Coley play. I think I'll remember that one tomorrow. Whoa! Well, where's that come out of? <laughs> Remember that shot, all right? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's an amazing player because we've been talking about him staying in control and probably looked about to the 40th and then he just gets the ball and he just decides, right, mid on's up and I can just go with it, go through with it. Oh, good cricket. Fine, use the pace of Nathan Lyon, runs away. Siddle, can he cut it off? I don't think he will. It's another boundary to the Indian captain. Down the wicket, beautiful shot from Virat Kohli. And it clears the rope. Wonderful timing from the Indian captain. That moves him to 81. Well, you sense it. He knows that the long on's there. And he just thought if Nathan Lyon gets a little too straight to me, I'll take him down the ground towards long off. Beautiful cricket shot, well executed by the skipper. Wants two. And should get it. And that is some good work from Pete Hanscom in the deep. And every time he's hitting uh, the boundary now, as that ticks on to 200 for India, he's threatening to, to get the boundary. He's making those fielders, Hanscom, Work very hard to save the four. Well done, well done, Glenn. Oh, I wanted to keep him on strike to bowl to Emma Stoney. Coley keeps a strike. 37 overs, three for 203. And still hot conditions out there, very muggy. Felt for Sean Marsh earlier today. That was out of the beating sound. This is Verrett Coley from side on. Let's see how lady hits the ball. Yeah, just his balance in the crease. Waits on that late one. Head over the ball. And just seems to have so much more time than everyone else. Lovely use of the feet to Nathan Lyon. Goes to the short one and gets over the top of it. Murat Coley. Gee, that was a beautiful shot. Just a bit of power just as he hit the ball and races away across the outfield 38 overs gone three for 209 and it's all class and the way he plays it and he just rides it he knows he needs a boundary off this over he gets a bit of width and he puts it away look how much it means to him the indian captain 90 from 72 now 
crowd in, in, in his pocket, isn't it? They've come for him and he's delivering. And there it is. His 39th One Day International 100. And the King gets his crown at the Adelaide Oval. But it won't mean anything to him unless he sees his side over the line and he levels the series. Glenn Maxwell celebrates for Eric Cole. He cannot believe it in the middle of the ground. The Australians, the door has just opened. Well, it hasn't what? That's a huge wicket for Australia. Captain Coley, he has to go. Very disappointed with himself. He wanted to be there at the end, but yeah, Australia, a big chance. I'll tell you what, MS Dhoni has to be there at the end now because I just wonder how much pressure he's put on Virat Kohli to play the big, big shots because he's not been hitting the boundaries. What an innings. 104 runs from 112 deliveries.